Uh, please forgive me. So, um, for those of you who know a bit of Sanskrit, uh, what does Anupya mean? Yes? Yes, Anupya means small together, but it also means small. Thank you. And Mahabhya means? Great. Great. So, Abhya means together, right? Um, so, whether it's small or whether it's great, please do it together. The speaker is Krishna, and he says, Shastri Bhyo Kushala. What does Kushala mean? This is also a Hindi word. Good. Good? good? It, it Manga also means? Kushala. Manga Kushala. Manga. Good. Auspicious. Auspicious. Also means? Happiness, I thought. Kushala means also happiness, but it also means artistic. Good things. Happiness. Sorry? Good things. Good things, happiness. Yes, a person who is good, person who is artistic, person who is auspicious. And Nara means? Human being. Human being. Very good. And Sarvatak means of, of all, right? And Saram, what does Saram mean? The essence. Right. And Pushpebhya, what does that mean? Pushpa. Pushpa. Flowers, yes. Together. Together, exactly. Well spotted. And Shakpada means is a name for the honeybee. Shak means six. Pada means feet. The six legged honeybee. So just as the honeybee, another way that you can um, paraphrase this is the honeybee, just like the artful human being, knows how to extract the essence. The pure essence from any scripture. They don't. Dis they don't discriminate between Muslim, Sikh, Hindu, Judaic, Christian. They're just going for the essence, and from the essence they can make the nectar, which is um, praying. Praying. Thank you, Dominic. What is praying? Love. Love. And the wise person who knows the art of transcendental science. They don't worry about whether it's old or new, or whether it's from the East or the West, do they? That's one of the reasons why you don't really find Hindus getting that, well, we're not Hindus, but you see the cultural umbrella of Hinduism, which is inclusivistic, it embraces many faiths and traditions, because it understands these essences, right? Or theoretically, we can say that as a cultural property. Hinduism is not exclusive, is it? In the same way, we can say that about science. There are many good scientists who don't quibble about religion on one side and science on the other. Right? Can anyone give me an example of a scientist in our time? Or Einstein. Einstein. Einstein's known for saying many beautiful things. Like the root of the, the highest expression is the mystic expression, he said. He also said all Religions and sciences are branches of the same tree. That is a big mind. That's a kosher mind, isn't it? That's an artistic mind. Because I think a broad-minded person isn't interested in the differences as much as they are interested in the similarities. Wouldn't we agree on that? Because if we're always talking about the differences, then we have something to fight about. But if we see the commonality, then we have something to celebrate, don't we? Okay, I'm going to read the purport to this beautiful verse. Now, the honeybee, I have a little mascot today, thanks to Bhakta Pater. <laughs> he has a, uh, a wonderful lesson to teach us. He's not looking at color or the smell. He doesn't mind where the flower is, does he? She. She's only looking for that essence. And she's going to make what? Honey, right? Right? So can we make honey in our lives? Sure we can. Yes. How can we make honey? William? Uh, by association, connection, union. Union? By spreading love. Spreading love. What's your name, please? Chinmai. Chinmai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes. Devotional service. Devotional service. What's your good name again? Divya. Divya. What are some other ways? Devotional service, spreading love, association of devotees? By going for essence that is Bhagavad Gita. 
Going for the essence that is in the Bhagavad Gita. What's your good name? Dinesh. Dinesh. Das. Das. And anything else? Anything you say must be full of love. Amen. Speak with love and fearlessness. That's when people speak with love and fearlessness, even though it might sting, what's the long term result? Yes, many kinds of benefit. Last two weeks ago when I was speaking, we heard about the knife of the pure devotee, didn't we? And sometimes it stings the false ego on the altar of love. That sacrificial knife cuts away the layers of egoism. And sometimes it hurts, doesn't it? But what's the long-term effect? We feel freedom. And that freedom is like honey, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that, that little honeybee, he's also an, a metaphor because he can go wherever he likes, can't he? And he's not thinking, oh, this is a beautiful flower. I'm, I'm going to go here and I'm going to stay there. And he's also not grasping. He just goes from one to the other to the other. And he only goes, he's only looking for the nectar. And if the flower doesn't have any nectar, then he's on to the next one. He's the nectar collector, right? So if we were nectar collectors, it means that we're not disturbed by anyone who has anything to say that is, that is negative. We just go on to the next person trying to offer service. So the purport says, in human society, the original knowledge is called Yeah, Vedas, yes. And the essential part of the Veda, or knowledge, is Krishna consciousness. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 1515, who knows that verse? He's for Krishna? Vedais to Sardar, Aham Eva Vedya. You know that one? This one says, it says, it's a beautiful verse. From the honeybee, anyway, it says, for me come knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. Krishna says, I am the source of your knowledge. I am the source of your remembrance. And I am the source of your forgetfulness. Sarvasya chaham ridasana bisto. Murtaks matir jnana mahopohanam cha. Vedaista sarvaya ahong eva vedya. Vedanta krit veda vid eva chaham. I am the source of the Vedas. I am the knower of the Vedas, the compiler of the Vedas. And I am the, the source of the Vedas. I am the... I am the or the the object of the Vedas. Hare Krishna. Who can claim that? That's quite a claim. Where else in scripture do you have God speaking so directly? I don't see it anywhere. And I tried my best to study all scripture. And we have a we live in a, a tremendously uh, fortunate time where we have access to, to so many scriptures. What is the scripture of the Sikhs? Guru Granth Sahib. Guru Granth Sahib. What is the scripture of the Jews? Madhava? What is the scripture of the Jews? Zohar, Kabbalah, the Old Testament. What is the scripture of the Muslims? Quran. What is the what is the scripture of the Zoroastrians or the Parsis? Come on, anyone? What is the Parsi scripture? The Zend Avesta. Anybody know any of other scriptures that we've heard of? Christian Bible. The Bible, yes. Thank you. There are so many scriptures. So, these are the different flowers, right? Right? Yes. And they are in different places, and they have different smells. They have different qualities, don't they? So what are some of the essences that we can derive from all these scriptures? Can anyone name an essence that's there in every flower of every scripture? What is one essence? Devotion to God. Devotion to God. Yes? 